This episode is brought to you by Newman Center for the Performing Arts. Friday, April 12th, see Brooklyn-based dance ensemble Urban Bushwomen's groundbreaking work, Legacy, Lineage, and Liberation. Centering women and members of the African diaspora, Legacy, Lineage, and Liberation is an evening of dance that transcends genre, illuminates overlooked perspectives, and contributes to our national conversation around equity and justice. Get your tickets now at newmancenterpresents.com. That's newmancenterpresents.com. Today on CityCast Denver, what would it look like for Denver to do better? A controversial new Instagram account is calling for action with candid pics of unhoused people in crisis. And over the weekend, they came after us. So me and producer Paul Caroli are talking about Do Better Denver and responding to all of your comments and questions on private members clubs, restaurant trade secrets, and those two funky, funky buildings. Today is Thursday, April 4th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Hey, Paul. Hey, Bree. Good morning. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. You've been doing a great job without me, but I, I missed you guys. Taking a little well, break. Well, we're glad to have you back. Well, today's a really fun day because we're devoting this entire show to you, our listeners, your amazing comments and voicemails, which we solicit every show and every show you guys deliver. And we wanted to take a deeper dive into some of the stuff you all been talking to us about in the last couple of weeks. Um, This is literally my favorite thing we do. I I don't know if you know this, but I love this. I do, I do know this about you, and it actually surprises me that we don't do it more often because I also enjoy it very much. It's like part of the conversational part of this show. Yeah. And it's super cool. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Yeah. Well, you know, you can always let us know what you think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> give, us, give us a call. Leave us a voicemail, 720-500-5418. But because you've been doing that, uh, our lovely listeners, we have a lot to talk about. Let's get started with yes. uh, our conversation um, about the Instagram account Do Better Denver. Paul, can you tell us more about what Do Better Denver is? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I feel like I should start by just a- addressing what happened on Friday. So this, sure. this is when we talked about the show with uh, Kyle Clark, you know, Nine News anchor, host, local media personality type. Um, we were really excited to have him on. And it just sort of came up um, offhandedly. We were talking about uh, unhoused folks who are living at the the former Doubletree Hotel up in Central Park area, just off I-70, that part of town. That's right. And I thought, Kyle, what do you think about this account? You know, I keep hearing people um, talking about it. It's it's quite big on Instagram and it's growing. They have like 54,000 people. Um, if you're not familiar, this is an account where they post pictures of unhoused folks in crisis. Um, they say to show what's happening in Denver mm-hmm. because they're outraged. Mm. Um, and then, so after we talked about this, uh, the people who run this account who have consistently remained anonymous, um, they posted about us and they called on their followers to leave a comment on our reel on Instagram. They said specifically, don't follow the account. Although I, I will note, uh, quite a few did. Thanks Um, for that. If you're new here too, welcome. Hope you love the content. Um, (laughs) But then they then they alluded to this backstory, and we did try to uh, to get them on the show back right. in February because this is an interesting new thing that's happening in the city. I I had not seen an account like this, and it's clearly resonating with people. Like as we've said in the interview request, you can see this all in the reels. It's all on Instagram. If if you haven't seen any of this, I mean, it's an interesting thing that happened. But basically, after they posted about us a brigade of their followers just came in and started commenting like crazy. And mm-hmm. I think they gave us a little bit of uh, more information about why they're doing this and who they are. And honestly, I'm thinking differently about it all after, really? after this whole incident. Yeah. Yeah. What's, I am. What has changed for you, Paul? Well, I think in the moment, what Kyle Clark said was, these are not people who live in Denver. Mm-hmm. And he made this point that this is for people in the suburbs who are maybe afraid of the city, who who haven't come down in a while, but they have this idea of what's happening in Denver and that this account um, gives them a, a venue for their rage. And I just, I don't know if I agree to that anymore. Really? Um, 
One, because I, I heard from some folks in my life who do follow the account, who saw their post about us mm, and, mm -hmm. and got outraged about us. So I think there's like, there's some people who are following these people who are like hate following just to know what's, what's up with something that's got a little heat on it. I would agree. I think uh, a lot of folks in my sphere are, are not necessarily even hate following as much as just following to see what people are saying and doing. But there is that, it's that vagueness of the internet where if you follow something, does that mean you co-sign it? Right. And that's yeah. generally not the case, especially, I mean, I would just say as journalists, we follow a lot of things because we're just trying to stay aware of what's going on. Um, not to dismiss anything, but just say there's a little bit of nuance here about followers. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people are doing. They're just trying to stay up on what's going on. This account purports to talk about what's going on in Denver. And if maybe you're feeling the same way, or if you have the same attitude toward unhoused people or the homelessness crisis, this is probably a good follow for you. Um, <laughs> now, whether or not what they're doing is going to have the impact that they're hoping for, I think that's that's a different conversation. Um, but, but there's also data on this, like the, the population of Denverites and why I think that there are a lot of Denverites who feel this way. And for me, the numbers in this Colorado polling Institute, uh, survey last year show that there, that this is a popular sentiment. Um, they, they polled on the question of encampment cleanups, AKA sweeps. Mm -hmm. And as we've talked about on the show, this issue has remained remained popular. People people support the sweeps. Last year it was 65%. And the right. the Do Better Denver account, while they say it has no connection to the 2019 campaign um around possibly banning sweeps, if you remember this, but that campaign to to stop the ban had this basically the same slogan, we can do better Denver. Together, so yes, it was called Together Denver, the uh lobbying group that was opposing um, legislation to undo the camping ban. Yeah. And, and they were successful that, that yep. effort to ban the camping ban or to <laughs> repeal the camping ban, uh, it went down in flames. So this has been consistently popular in Denver. Wait, can doing I, these can sweeps. I, can I challenge you here a little bit? Please. Interestingly enough, and maybe there is some data or we can look back at this, uh, prior to together Denver putting together their advertising campaign against, uh, that, that uh that measure to undo the camping ban before that was organized when the mm -hmm. the the measure came out to repeal the camping ban it was uh overwhelmingly supported but then the opposition started film or started sharing these commercials and things and it changed sentiment overnight i feel like nine news might have covered it but um I, so i would just i would just say it's a little bit more complicated than that because i was in the trenches of that conversation uh working on the kaylin heffernan's mayoral campaign at that same time Interesting. Yeah, I, I totally hear you on that. And like whether or not people support the sweeps and whether or not they like this Instagram account, it's it's apples and oranges. You know, it's a tenuous connection I'm drawing. I'm just I'm just trying to find some meaning in the data. Um, maybe we could read some of these comments. I think some of these are pretty interesting. Sure. Sure. Uh, do you want to read this first one? Because I, I have a response to it. <laughs> Great. OK, so this is a comment from Tell Me More Tours. Uh, they say, there are voters and neighborhoods in Denver that don't directly deal with slash see drug addicts, human waste, and illicit drug sales in broad daylight. Denver resident that can afford to not work slash interact with the troubling core neighborhoods don't see this on a daily basis. Stop grouping all Denverites as a monolith. Cherry Creek is not up or downtown. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess the thing that struck me here was the voters and neighborhoods in Denver that don't directly deal with drug addicts is the othering of this constant. The mm -hmm. only way to make this argument work is to other people and to say that they are something that I am not, even though many folks who use drugs uh, or maybe have struggles with drug issues or alcohol issues do so within their homes. We don't see them do it. Um, and so this is what strikes me about this conversation. It's constantly about somebody else that's not me, that's not my family, that's not my life, that's not my lifestyle. And I am doing the right thing and they are doing the wrong thing. And that's what struck me more than anything. And I, I don't know, I, I, I guess I live in one of these neighborhoods where I see folks in crisis every day. Mm -hmm. um, and I have compassion for them still. So I, I think it's possible for you to feel these certain ways to, regardless of what neighborhood you live in. That makes that, yeah. I just the don't. I don't buy is, the. I don't buy the neighborhood argument. I guess the it's neighborhood like, argument is kind of weird. Like it's not like 
this problem, the un, the unhoused crisis is isolated in downtown. Right. I have regular uh, unhoused folks in my neighborhood that are neighbors in my neighborhood. Yeah. Um, let's go on to another comment here. This one is from Liesel uh, underscore Lord 11. This interview is tone deaf. Um, they're talking about our conversation with Kyle Clark mm -hmm. and completely invalidates the traumatic experiences real Denverites are facing on a daily basis because of bad policy. Mm -hmm. I've had my car broken into twice in the last three months, both times in extremely popular busy neighborhoods in broad daylight. $1,000 out of pocket for repairs, no police involvement in either scenario. Uh, do better Denver, more like do better city cast. Uh, prayer, prayer hands. hands. Prayer hands. <laughs> Uh, I, again, we're, we're, we're equating someone's car being broken into to how we feel about non-consensually filming people who are in the, the midst of a crisis. I, yeah. do you, can you, do you see the connection here, Paul? Maybe it's just me. I think people are just upset. I mean, this person, my heart goes out to this person. I, that sucks having your car broken into. I wouldn't want that to happen to me. I'm sorry that happened. Well, sure. I do think though, what 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 a story like this by cherry picking an anecdote like this or by cherry picking um, photos of people in crisis and and purporting to say that you're talking about what's going on in Denver mm -hmm. that you're creating this very distorted idea of what's going on actually because the truth is crime rates in Denver are currently dropping from right. our highs in the pandemic. We've been talking about this all year. So this this narrative about a Denver in decay or like some you know, horrible problem that's spinning out of control. I just, I just don't think that's accurate. And I think that's one of my big issues with this account is that they're not talking about what's happening in Denver. They're talking about some things that make them personally uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point, Paul, because I think you, one of the things that happens when you and I have these conversations is you're very data driven and I'm very emotion driven. Right. And, um, which, is what makes for an interesting conversation. And I appreciate that you're bringing this up because we have been, we've been talking about that conversation about crime since we started this show three years ago, right? We've been yeah. watching this data. We've been watching changes in the DA or how police are handling things. We had that really interesting conversation about car thefts. Um, so yeah, it, the data is not backing it up, but I hear what you're saying is that it doesn't invalidate people's experiences, right? Yeah, in the which city. is real. Sure. And I, f I feel for those people. I mean, right. being a victim of a crime sucks. It just, it sucks. Sometimes it's horrible. Absolutely. And I don't invalidate the fact that having crimes committed against you sucks. I'm just saying those things are not uh, mutually, they're not the same. It's not the same as somebody experiencing a crisis who's maybe withdrawing or using drugs in public versus your car getting broken into. It's just not the same to me. Um, what we can share and we'll share some of that in the show notes. There's a great piece from Chase Woodruff, uh, at Colorado Newsline about the if you're looking at if you want to see more of the data, we've definitely got that for you. Um, let's move on to another comment about the privacy issue, about this, yeah. this issue of posting photos of people without their um, without their consent. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a comment from at Lux dot meows um, at CityCast Denver. If you're in public, there are no expectations of privacy. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Again, I like the first half of this comment to discuss. The second half is just trying to shut it down so we don't get to have another conversation. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Actually, it, you've gotten it completely twisted because there are two different things happening here. Do you want to yeah. do you want to explain Unpack that, it. Paul? Unpack it. No, go well, ahead. Well, it's like, Unpack okay, it. sure. No expectations of privacy. I get that. But ethically and morally, aren't we obligated to respect each other? I think this is where I come from is, uh, um, is the ethics and morals of how I feel about people in particular, in this conversation, how we view people who are unhoused as well as people who are using drugs or maybe in the midst of a um, substance use crisis in public, that is my my ethical and moral obligation is to respect them, whether or not I like what they're doing, you know, and I don't I just don't think these are the same things like, sure, I guess it's. You don't have any expectations of privacy at all. I'm thinking about that show that the MCA ran, gosh, I don't know, a decade and a half ago of that photographer that took non-consensual photographs of his neighbors. And oh, really? I put it up in this. the museum. Yeah. And I huh. and again, I'm, an, I'm a person who supports the arts and conversations around censorship. And I really struggled with that show. I actually didn't go see it. It made me too uncomfortable. Because I don't huh. like that idea, and and there, and in that sense, this is an artist that potentially could be profiting. This is a little different story. I'm still confused as to what Do Better Denver's point is in non-consensually filming people. 
Um, but I, I do think that it is sure totally legal. But is it the right thing to do? No, no. So we actually do know a little bit about what they're trying to do. Um, thanks to our friends at Westward, they had an interview with the folks behind the account. Now they did allow the the, the people behind it to remain anonymous, which you know people in our industry, everyone's going to have a different opinion about that. Personally, I enjoy knowing a little bit more and making that compromise. You know that's that's okay with me. I liked having the information, this particular information. Um, the person behind the account, I'm going to read a quote here. She says. We're trying to inspire positive action and change the narrative around what's actually compassionate, she says. As a self-proclaimed, quote, Denver girl and lifelong Coloradan, she says she loves being here but hates what she's seeing, so she decided to do something about it. But what, it, yeah, okay. I don't, I just, I guess I just don't understand what she's doing. You know I what I mean? I think she's channeling outrage. She's like, I, I, sure. I don't know, I'm straining to put myself in her head. Like, I think that she has noticed this outrage. I think a lot of people are feeling it. They're feeling very frustrated. They're feeling like their city is out of control, the city that they love, and that they want someone in power to take some action about it. And, um, and, and I, I guess I get that. I, I think the mayor's office is paying attention to this account and this movement because I, I was reading this article and there was some comments from um, the, the press secretary in the mayor's office. And she was saying like, well, they don't have any solutions. They're not very solutions right. oriented. There are many, this is a quote, there are many trusted forms of news sources in our city we rely on to share pertinent information about our administration's efforts. We do not include a nameless Instagram to be a source of truth. It is apparent in the posts with inaccurate information this account irresponsibly shares to their many followers. And they're like, there's no solutions here. It's not solutions oriented. It's just anger. We don't know what to do with that. Right. I mean, I, there's two things I want to res respond to here, Paul, is the attention, the attention economy of the Internet and as also how it feels to wield power when you have attention. And this person has 54,000 followers. There's an incentive to continue to do this. Um, we as humans enjoy um, the interactions when we get likes, lots of likes and lots of clicks. I mean, there's like so there's tons of data out there about how social media works. And mm -hmm. as a person that has been commenting in a public space on the Internet for 20 years, I understand that power. I've had that power. I mean, we have a certain amount of power here on this show, right? We have an attentive audience and we can share our beliefs and views. And that's, I think, what's actually going on here as well, whether this person, regardless of whether they're anonymous or not, they're still feeling something from that. But the other thing I want to say is um, I agree with the mayor's office. Well, I don't understand the purpose. And where I come from on this is something longtime listeners will know about me is I'm a huge supporter of the Harm Reduction Action Center, which works with folks who use drugs. But what I want to say about that is uh, Lisa Rayville who runs Harm Reduction Action Center is on the corner of 8th and Lincoln every single morning. I see her every time I am driving to Westward. She's on the corner every single morning talking to folks, bringing folks in, uh, engaging with them. A lot of them are drug users. That's why they're there. But you know what they also do? They do community action cleanups every single month where they they mobilize volunteers to come out and pick up trash. And they are they get good neighbor awards for being a place where people who use drugs go. And they're also one of the most respected organizations in their community because they organize people to try to do something to change whatever this issue is, which is a lot of different things. So I'm just saying there's there's another thing that could be happening. Mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. another avenue to approach this issue. Well, Bree, I think maybe we've given this enough more time. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see clips of this conversation I was on Instagram. Say, People calling me horrible names, you know. I, I, I'm sorry I hurt you. Paul, Paul, also, but also our producer Olivia. I think we mentioned this at the top. Reached out again to request yes. an interview. It's not that we have not tried to engage in a real, meaningful conversation with this account. They don't want to talk with us, and that's their choice. How I, I don't. Yeah. It doesn't matter how we feel about it. We've tried. So I, I saw that question being asked a couple times of us: "Is did you try?" And yes, absolutely, we've tried, and that door is always open. So if you're yep. from that account and you want to talk to us, please reach out. We'd love to have you on the show. Or or if you follow the account and you love the account, it means something to you, I'd be interested in hearing from you too. Feel free to feel free to email us or, or get in touch. But right now, let's go to a break and then let's talk about some fun stuff. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by the Colorado Wine Board. Because the wine community here is like surprisingly robust. 
I mean, think about Bigsby's Folly and Infinite Monkey Theorem here in Denver alone. And there are urban wineries all across the Front Range. Then there's the Western Slope, Peonia, I mean, Palisade, hello, Palisade Wine, are you kidding me? It didn't used to really be a thing, but from what I hear, it's very much a thing now. There are more than 165 wineries across Colorado to explore, and they produce all sorts of wine that reflect our unique culture and climate. So finding a label that you're going to love is easy, no matter where your adventure takes you. Discover it for yourself and support local winemakers at coloradowine.com. That's coloradowine.com. This episode is brought to you by ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you know how much work it takes to produce something great while dealing with complicated shipping issues. That's why over 130,000 companies have turned to ShipStation, an innovative tool that allows you to focus less on shipping and more on building your brand. With ShipStation, you can manage orders, label printing, reporting, and customer service on one easy-to-use dashboard. You'll reduce warehouse costs with reliable enterprise solutions and save thousands on shipping costs with discounts up to 89% off. Plus, you can effortlessly import orders from everywhere you sell online. So, turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. Go to ShipStation.com and use code POD to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code POD. Okay, and we're back. We did a show recently about private member clubs, private social clubs. And Paul, we sent you on the inside. I have such a fun episode. Please go back and listen to it if you haven't heard it. This was an amazing <laughs> experience for me. Um, my bud, my buddy, uh, JD, he listened and he, uh, he insists that I did join despite me saying that I did not join the club. <laughs> and he's also been calling it the Illuminati club, which I love. He's I, I feel I feel what JD is saying here. It could feel a little bit like that. It's a oh, fancy totally. place. It's a, totally. And also, can we say JD Lopez of the Left Hand Right Brain past podcast, guest. past guest of our show? I, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm with JD on that. Uh, what else did we hear from our listeners about the private members clubs conversation? Um, okay, so here's a text, uh, and this is about the Clayton Members Club and Hotel in Cherry Creek. That's the one that I went and did the tour of. So, so this person texted in, just want to decode the how many members is our best kept secret for you. To me, that screams, we don't have that many members and we're desperately trying to seem like we're cooler than we are to build our club. Best way to meet people? Actually, let's respond to that first part too, because there's another part that's also quite interesting. What do you think about that? I felt the exact same way as this listener in that when they said, when they're, you're, you just straight out asked, how many members do you have? And their response yeah. was extremely vague. We can't tell you. And yeah. I, I agree with this listener that said to me, we don't have, it's not, it's not a robust membership at this point. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, it's a business. It's, it's, they're growing, you know, they're right. trying to start something. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I, they I don't agree have any too. It's just, I wouldn't, I would take the negative connotation away and just say, you know, it's a new thing that's starting up in the city. Well, and they don't have any obligation to reveal that. I mean, we could ask all kinds of organizations how many members they have. It doesn't really, it doesn't, yeah. it's not something we're required to know. Um, uh, the sec Okay. So I, I also love the second part of this. Can I read okay, the second so part of this? Go, go on. Go for it. So the second part of this text said, best way to meet people? Volunteer or join organizers or political activists around a topic you're passionate about. You'll definitely have a topic to fill the awkward silences with, and it'll give you hope for the community you're a part of. I, this is my recommendation to folks all the time, because it's not just that you're maybe connecting with folks who have a similar idea or ideology about something. You have a you have a thing, you have a purpose, you get to collaborate on something. And I find that to be one of the best ways to solidify friendships is have something to work on together. What did you think, Paul? I thought that was great advice. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, but I like this other one even more. This is another text on uh, clubs where you can meet people. Uh, quote, this one is a little obscure, but there is a mile high yo-yo club meets every couple weeks and people of all ages hang out and yo-yo together. There's a Facebook page. There's also the Rocky Mountain Regional Yo-Yo Competition coming up at the end of May. Oh my gosh. Yes. Find your people. And especially this is cool to me. All ages. It's, it's sometimes really hard for us to socialize outside of our age groups. So again, if you have something in common, that's so, oh my God, I kind of want to meet the yo, I'm not a yo-yoer myself, but I like kind of want to like meet these people and see what, what yo-yoing is all about for them. That's really, you sweet. know, I was into yo-yoing for a while. <laughs> I got pretty good at it. 
I could walk the dog. <laughs> Did you have a preferred yo-yo brand? Oh, boy. <laughs> Duncan's no. like the famous one, I feel like. That's true. I guess I didn't get that into it. But I do remember <laughs> learning that one trick and feeling so proud of myself. Because it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's a hard. I, uh, I'm i trying to, I tried to yo-yo. I used to work at one of those toy stores that was a quote, to a, a learning store, a learning toy mm. store. It's like my and, favorite kind of store. Yeah. <laughs> I worked at the store of knowledge and the learning smith, um, which you would have loved, Paul. When you worked there, you got to wear an apron that said chief brain officer. Um, <laughs> but that's where my, my yo-yoing that's the only reason I know about Duncan. <laughs> nice, nice. Let's let's move on. We got a we got a couple of voicemails here from a listener on our uh, conversation about my neighbor Felix and Alma Fondafina, the two restaurants who are now in litigation over a contractual dispute. Um, it's two Mexican restaurants in uh, on the on Highlands, um, and they're they're fighting over. Uh, an employee, the folks who started Alma Fondafina used to work for my neighbor, Felix, the, the Lotus Concepts restaurant group. And there was maybe a non-compete clause in this contract. And the Lotus Concepts folks are now trying to enforce it and basically get Alma Fondafina shut down. Yeah. So, so, oh, we have a voicemail. That's right. We have a voicemail from one of our listeners about this. Hey, CityCast Denver. My name is Molly and I live in the Regis neighborhood. I was um, listening to you talk about the my neighbor Felix controversy and the non-compete and it really riled me up because I just think non-competes are like amoral, shouldn't exist. They're really bad for the economy. They're really bad for the people who sign them. And so it's like, I don't care if they're taking trade secrets. Um, non-competes shouldn't be allowed, period. California's banned them. I think that President Biden was talking about banning them federally. I think they should be not existent. Thanks. Love the show. Bye. Interesting. I didn't realize there was a movement to ban non-compete clauses in contracts. I've just known that as a thing. I mean, in the media world, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure I've signed contracts with non-compete clauses before. I think it's quite I think uh, it's, regular. Yeah. Maybe there's a tide turning kind of around the labor conversation. Yeah. You know, uh, what did you think? What did you think about that? Like, cause I, I feel like the, uh, the thing that struck me about Molly's comment was she said they're really bad for the economy. What do you think about that, Paul? I am sure if you ask 10 economists, you'll get 10 opinions. I I would love to look into that more. You know, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, I loved that. Um, okay, also, we heard from you all about the two green buildings conversation that we had with Kyle Harris from Denverite. He's he's sort of been on, he sort of put himself on real estate watch the last couple of years, which I've enjoyed his writing about. But we talked to him because he had written about both the populist building on... Uh, what is that on 14th and court right next to the city and county right. building. This is the famously, uh, or at least the, they claim the first carbon positive hotel in the country. Yes. Fascinating. And then the other one is of course, one river North, the, uh, what I call the garden gash building up in, uh, up in Rhino. <laughs> what did our, okay. Oh, we got a, we got a DM on Instagram from Lee R who said, just listen to the March 25th episode. And for me, the populist building resembles a strange organic church-like building. Um, example, Sagrada Familia or Gaudi-esque. I call it the Sagrada de Denver. Ooh, that makes it sound fancy. Yeah. I, like that. I mean, that's such a good call. This might be the best one I've heard. I don't know if Sagrada de Denver uh, just flies off the tongue. That doesn't like feel great in my mouth, yeah. but the comparison to Gaudi and the, oh. the Spanish architecture is so on point. I loved that. I hadn't thought about that and it totally clicked for me. This is a great comment. I have to Google that. I have to be, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't know Gaudi. Yeah. Look it up. Look it up right now. Sagrada to Familia. I think it's in Barcelona. Oh. Yeah. But you can see like the yes. windows and the sort of like the, the conical shapes almost or the half cones and the patterns. It's it looks it's like a far reef. Off. Like um, it has, it definitely is organic looking. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then my friend Chanks actually commented, every time I drive by the white building, uh, populace, I hear opera singers. It looks like they're covering the building with a bunch of singing mouths. And I have to say, I like Chanks. I would take Chanks' idea and call it the opera house. That's what I would call it is Denver's opera house. I love that. I love that. You thought. know, you know, the Sydney opera house, the eggshell building. Yes. It kind of oh. has a little bit of that going on as well. I never thought about that. It totally mm -hmm. does. It's like mm -hmm. a bunch of open mouths. Um, here's another one from uh, A. Bucknam. Oh, Alan. Who suggests the hive 
and the ant farm. I okay. assume the hive is for the populace and the ant farm is for One River North. Also, I think that Alan works in graphic design, so he knows. He's like, you need some punchy, you need some short, you need something mm-hmm. people remember. Those two high contenders as well. Yeah, those both <laughs> pop. I love Ant Farm. <laughs> I do too. Um, next is from Not the Season Winter. I always call One River North the Canyon. Why doesn't anyone talk about the back side of the building? It looks so different from the canyon side. Definitely not as cool. <laughs> I agree, actually. We we should have talked about that, but the back side is just like a regular building. Yeah, and maybe that's why we didn't talk about it. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's yeah. the least interesting <laughs> part of the building. The canyon is good. The canyon is good. Uh, user Ambo called it the ant farm and the cheese grater. Simple, okay. effective. I Another like vote it. for the ant farm. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Oh, and then here's the best one. And.account <laughs> says, the second building looks like the Terminator half face. <laughs> I would like to put those images side by side. The Terminator half face and then the One River North building to like think about it. I got to Google the Terminator half face. Is she talking about like... Or, or it could like, be- Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, because it's like, no, it's the, isn't it the bad, it's like, it's like his half of his face is literally torn off and exposing. The robot. Yeah. Underneath. So that, would that be One River North? Because it's like, there's, you rip off the glass windows and, oh my gosh, there's this huge garden inside, overflowing. Now I'm questioning it too, Paul. Which one could it be? I don't know. Interesting. That's an interesting one. Um, anyway, thanks everyone for writing in with names. Let, let us know more and let us know your thoughts on everything we put out. We, we love talking to y'all, responding to comments, questions. Um, you know how to find us on social media, um, but also text or leave us a voicemail anytime you want at 720-500-5418. Again, the CityCast Denver hotline is always open at 720-500-5418. Thanks for joining me, Paul. Yeah, see you next time. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed this show, why not take a minute to tell the Illuminati about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See ya. See ya.